Hello everyone, this is Dr. Roger Paul, and tonight we're going to continue our study. Oops, I got off our online there. On the local universe mother spirit. And we're in section four, page 377 uh, on the original book. And let's say a little prayer and we will get started. Father, thank you for bringing us together tonight that we might study your wonderful revelation. Pray that you'll be with us. Bless these people that come listen to this uh, message each each week, each day. Pray that you'll open our hearts and minds that we might share this with others. We thank you. We give you the praise in your son, Michael, Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. 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 Okay. Uh, let's start a, a new way. Uh, tonight, dear, let's let Jane start and then we'll go around. Okay. okay. And I'll, I'll read until more people come. Jane, will you take the first, the title and the first three things there, if you would, please? Okay. For the local universe circuits, there are three distinct spirit circuits in the local universe of Nebadon. One, the bestowal spirit of the Creator Son the comforter, the spirit of truth. Two, the spirit circuit of the divine minister, the Holy Spirit. Three, the intelligence ministry circuit, including the more or less unified activities, but diverse functioning of the seven adjutant mind spirits. Okay, so these are the three main spirits that come from originally from the infinite spirit. And now that to the local universe mother spirits can't come into her full personality, she takes over these circuits, right? And notice here it says the comforter is the spirit of truth. You think we need comfort because we got all these other circuits to straighten us out? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm just joking. All right. So the spirit of the creator son that comes from the eternal son, right? And yeah. it comes down through the creator son and the comforter or the spirit of truth is Jesus's presence with us all the time, right? And that is the spirit of truth. Now, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of the infinite spirit that comes down through the local universe mother spirit, and that's what they call the divine minister, probably why they call it the Holy Spirit, right? It gets confused a lot in the New Testament. They call the Holy, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, a lot of different, use it in a lot of different terms, and sometimes they're talking about the spirit of truth. Sometimes they're actually talking about the Holy Spirit. They don't know. All right, and then the seven adjutant mind spirit is the intelligent ministry spirits. And we'll see in this chart down here, this picture, that there are the three spirits. You've seen this before. We've talked about these, these circuits before. But the last one, the intelligence ministry circuit of the local universe is the, seventh, the seven adjutant mind spirits. And this is locally to our local universe, these seven adjutants. Now, each and every one of the 700 uh, local universe has their own circuit of the adjutant minds, okay? So every single uh, creative mother spirit has her own circuit of the seven adjutant mind spirits and they're separate from us. So even though the circuits start out from the infinite spirit, the ones that actually serve us are specific for our local universe. Okay. Makes sense. And, yeah. and is that yeah. because of the master spirit? No, no, that's because of the local universe mother spirit. Okay. It's individual for each and every local universe. Right? Okay. And, mm -hmm. and that's why it's they're all different for each and every mm -hmm. of the 700, 700,000 local universes, right? All right, Diane, uh, did you take the next? Hadjutant uh, mind spirit comes from the Holy Spirit. No, no, that's separate. The Holy Spirit is separate than the seven adjutants. Where do they come from? The seven adjutants, they come from the, the local universe mother spirit. 
Okay. Okay. Two separate entities. Now, if we go back up to this chart, you'll see them listed as two different things here, right? The circuit of divine ministers of the local universe, mother spirits, the Holy Spirit of your world. And then the next one is the intelligent. So there are two separate circuits, right? The seven agents is on the intelligence ministry circuit and the Holy Spirit is on the, its own circuit for the, from the divine ministers or the local universe mother spirits, right? So now, the third, yeah. The third one, which is the mind spirit, the mind circuit, right. is it? Right. That's so the mind that's, circuit. That's right. Yeah. yeah, and that comes from the infinite spirit. Not that the or, originates. Or, yeah, it originates from the infinite spirit, the mind circuit, right? But part cosmic. of that mind circuit. Yeah, it's the cosmic mind, right? But part of that mind circuit is, is a section of that mind circuit is the intelligent ministry circuit of the local universe, okay? Separate entity, okay? Because when we get done with the seven adjutants, what takes its place? The cosmic mind. Yeah. Right? And that continues with us all in way. all the men, all the way. Right, right. In essence, if you think about it, we are now, right now, this very moment, part of the cosmic mind. Okay? Oh. Yeah. All the time, right? But there's a separate entities that are called the seven adjutant mind spirits within that mind circuit. Make sense? Yes. A part of that mind circuit. Kinda. It's difficult to get your head around it, but is it like the Holy Spirit is very personal? It's separate. Yes, it's very it's personal. It's separate. It's personal. Yeah. While yeah. this mind circuit, we could participate collectively in it. Like That's right. now, for example, that yeah. comes yeah. under that third one. Think of it this way. The Holy Spirit is a ministry spirit. Okay. So mm -hmm. think of the Holy Spirit as the infinite spirits and the local universe mother spirits love being projected to us in a ministry fashion. Right. Okay. That's the difference. Where the adjutants and the mind circuit is positive, part of the cosmic mind, part of the whole. Right. Yeah. So one is pouring out love on us constantly. Right. The, the Holy Spirit, where the comforter. Is a love ministry, too, but the comforter comes from the eternal son and through the creator sons. Right. So you can think of the the bestowal spirit of the comforter, the spirit of truth as Jesus's love being poured on out upon us so that we can discern truth, what is truth and what is not. That's why they call it the spirit of truth. Okay. So it's our teacher in essence, right? Think of it that way. And it comes from the eternal son. And it comes to the eternal son. son. Right. Right. Through the creator sons. All right. Let's go on to the next one. Diane, would you take the next one? Oh, yeah. You go first. The creator sons are endowed with the spirit of universe presence in many ways analogous to that of the seven master spirits of paradise. This is the spirit of truth, which is poured out upon a world by a distal son after he receives spiritual title to such a sphere. This bestowed comforter is a spiritual force which ever draws all true seekers towards him, who is the personification of truth in the local universe. This spirit is an inherent endowment of the creator son, emerging from his divine nature, just as the master circuits of the grand universe are derived from the personality presence of the paradise deities. So you see the, the, the comparison they make? Just as the master spirits of the grand universe 
deride their personality presence from the paradise deities, the creator sons uh, get theirs from the seven master spirits of paradise and the infinite, uh, the eternal son, right? So the interesting part about the spirit of truth is this, the spirit of truth in essence is a teacher of truth, okay? That was, remember when Jesus was still on the planet, he says, when I leave, I'll send my comforter to you. And basically he's there to teach us constantly about truth and love, right? Being our elder brother and creator, right? All right. It makes his personal presence with us always. Okay, let's take the next one. Uh, Rodney, I you take the next one. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Can I, can I just comment on that one line there? <clears throat> yeah, sure. But it does say that, that this bestowal comforter is the spiritual force whichever draws all truth seeker towards him because he's the personification of truth of truth in the local yeah. universe mm -hmm. right right so that the spirit of truth literally draws you to jesus if you think about it or mm -hmm. michael right if you see constantly it. And it doesn't stop there, though. The, you know, the interesting part about the spirit of truth is it doesn't stop there. That spirit, same spirit of truth continues to draw you towards whom? The eternal the son. When you, the eternal yeah. son, you know, because we will be part of the spiritual circuit at that point, right? All right. Rodney, would you take the next one, please? The creator son may come and go. His personal presence may be in the local universe or elsewhere, yet the spirit of truth functions undisturbed. For this divine presence, while derived from the personality of the Creator Son, is functionally centered in the person of the divine minister. So the divine minister or our local universe mother spirit is the one that this circuit comes out from. The spirit of truth comes out from, right? So the circuit of the spirit of truth actually flows through whom? The local universe mother spirit along that. So does the Holy Spirit. So in other words, perhaps she's the broadcaster She's the broadcaster, yes, of the spirit of truth. All circuits come through her, right? All the circuits. So the circuit from the sun, the eternal sun, and the circuit that is part of the creator sun still comes through her. So both the Holy Spirit and the spirit of truth comes from her, right? Comes through. Oh, it's her. like an antenna emitting. Yeah, constantly, right? because she's in charge of the circuits, right? Hmm. All right. And we're going to get a little bit deeper into this. Jane, would you take the next one? You're, you're muted, Jane. Okay, sorry. The universe mother spirit, however, never leaves the local universe headquarter, headquarters world. The spirit of the creator's son may and does function independently of the personal presence of the son, but not so with her personal spirit. The Holy Spirit of the divine minister would become non-functional if her personal presence should be removed from Salvington. Her spirit presence seems to be fixed on the universe headquarters world and it is this very fact that, that enables the spirit of the creator's son to function independently of the whereabouts of the son. The universe mother spirit acts as the universe focus and center of the spirit of truth, as well as of her own personal influence, the Holy Spirit. Okay, so if she, it's, the reason she cannot leave Salvington is both of these circuits would fail if she were not there. 
right? Because she's the focal point of both the spirit of truth and the Holy Spirit, right? So if she ever left Salvington like a creator son can do, then all this that goes through her would no longer be doing that. Makes sense? Now, why can't the creator son take up her place so she could leave? Y'all know this, believe it or not. Yeah, you told us last time. Yeah, he can't leave because he can't be in but one place at a time, right? right but she, she spreads but she spreads her presence out throughout the whole entire local universe That's because she difference. works from within all from within That's right That's yeah. right and he, and he works from without all Without right? yeah Yeah Makes sense Yes so it we're does covered, covered inside and out and, and then out. the father father works from within out too right he works, uh -huh. always works from within out, right? So remember that the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of Truth is a superimposition on us, right? Influence, imposed. it's imposed on us, but the influence of the Father is from within us out, right? That's the difference, all right? That's good, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Diane. Uh, well, I'll take the next one. You take the one after that, Diane. The, cre the creator father son and the creative mother spirit both contribute variously to the mind endowment of their local universe children. But the creative spirit does not bestow mind until she is endowed with personal prerogatives. Now, remember this from last week? We talked about when she became... Uh, a personality upon yeah. the return of the creator. Well, actually she became a personality when she went uh, before that, but when she became a personality uh, at the point they decided to make creatures, right? Up to that point, our mind endowment would have been taken over, been, been given by the infinite spirit, right? But that's not the case because there were no beings before that point, right? Okay, so when they decided to make create life upon that decision to make life and she became a personality, then she could bestow the mind endowment, which includes what? The seven adjutants, right? Up to that point, there was no reason to do that. Make sense? Correct. All right. All right, dear, would you take the next one? The super voluntary orders of personality in a local universe are endowed with the local universe types. What did I say? What? Oh, excuse me. The super, I'm going to say it wrong again. The super. The super revolutionary orders of personality in a local universe are endowed with the local universe type of the super universe pattern of mind. The human and the subhuman orders of evolutionary life are endowed with the adjutant spirit types of mind ministration. Okay, this is really, really important. They say the super revolutionary orders of personality in a so local universe. Who would that be? That would be any support being like uh, any of the beings that come from the Trinity or any uh, creature that was created outside the local universe. And also, um, you could include some of the, the uh, sons of God like the Melchizedek's in that. It's questionable. I'm not sure. But, but mostly they're the Trinitized. The Trinity, most of the Trinity origin type beings, are, yeah, are people, and there's lots of other beings in our local universe they don't tell us about, right? Mm -hmm. So, these orders of beings I'm talking about are on the super universe level, okay? So, if you come from the super universe level, okay, you would have uh, a super universe 
pattern of mind and you would be taken care of under what? Cosmic, Cosmic mind, right? The, okay. Yeah. But the Are they human, advanced? They're huh? not in light and life, but they're very advanced per, then? Very advanced beings. Yeah. Yeah, they would be. Because they would be super universe origin types of beings, mm -hmm. right? That's why they would have a super universe pattern of mind, which would be the cosmic mind, right? Okay, but the human and subhuman orders of life are all endowed with the seven adjuvant types of mind, okay? And that includes all humans and all the animals, okay? But all the animals don't have the last two, worship and wisdom, only the human, right? So if you think about it, we, have, we are endowed with the local universe mind pattern, okay? When we get to be spirit beings, what do we turn into? Our super, super universe, universe. pattern mind being. You got me? Mm -hmm. So that's why we no longer need the seven adjutants. Okay. Our mind endowment will be replaced with the super universe mind endowment. Okay. Be an upgrade. Uh, and we'll get an upgrade. That's right. Mm. Rodney, would you take the next one? The, se the seven adjutant mind. The seven adjutant mind spirits are the creation of the divine minister of a local universe. These mind spirits are similar in character, but, but diverse in power, and all partake alike of the nature of the universe spirit, although they are hardly regarded as personalities apart from their mother creator. The seven adjutants have been given the following names. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of worship, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of courage, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of intuition, of quick perception. So those are the main categories, right? Everything else that we have within us, like the mothering instinct and all these other things are part of one of these subcategories. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Okay, but this is the, the, the seven main categories of the adjutants themselves, all right? And we can tell that if, if the animals doesn't have the last tune, wis wisdom and worship, then the animals have a spirit of counsel. They can communicate with each other, right? Spirit of knowledge, they have a certain amount of knowledge in, in the way they do things. Most of them are, are born with all the knowledge they need from the very beginning day of life that they're going to need the rest of their life, right? The spirit of courage, something you know, notice some animals are very courageous and some of them aren't, right? Uh, because they've been, you know, tracked down and ate and everything else for so long, right? And then there's a spirit of understanding. So they can perceive, um, they can perceive information about their surroundings, other animals, humans, lots of other things, because they have understanding and they have built in intuition. And under this one is the mothering instinct right intuition and only women normally have a mothering instinct okay difference between male and female now what do men have rather than a mothering instinct normally they have the a father courage fathering, fathering. fathering instinct right and it's interesting because this these particular instincts if under one circumstance or another apparently the spirit of knowledge will transfer this over to the opposite sex in cases where you have animals whose mothers get killed or something, then many times the fathers take over and take on the mothering job of the animals, you know? 
So, you know, they can, they can move around a little bit, but these are the ones, the main ones. Okay. And uh, it's interesting because these are the ones that are also mentioned in the book of Revelation. We'll see in a minute. All right. For real. Uh, yeah. Jane, would you uh, like to take the next one, please? Okay. There are the seven spirits of God, like lamps burning before the throne, which the prophet saw in the symbols of vision. But he did not see the seats of the four and 20 sentinels about these seven adjutant mind spirits. This record represents the confusion of two presentations, one pertaining to the universe headquarters and the other to the system capital. The seats of the four and 20 elders are on Jerusalem, the headquarters of your local system of inhabited worlds. Okay. So, so let me kind of break this down so you kind of understand what they're talking about here. The seven spirits of God, these lamps burning before the throne, okay? The seven spirits of God would be what? That would be the seven adjutant mind spirits, and that would originate in Jerusalem, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> that yeah. would originate in Salvington. Salvington. There we go had to correct myself here all right the 20 and 40 sentinel, sentinel, sentinels about the seven adjunct mind spirits that this is what's confusing in the book of revelation because these are on jerusalem okay mm -hmm. and that's the headquarters of our local system okay so that we got two different presentations all right we're going to go one more paragraph, and then I'm going to take you to the book of Revelation here in a second. All right. Uh, Diane, would you take the next one, please? But it was a Salvington that John wrote. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. The universe broadcast to the local systems. He also envisioned the directional control creatures of the local universe, the living compasses of the headquarters world. This directional control in Nebadon is maintained by the four control creatures of Salvington who operate over the universe currents and are ably assisted by the first functioning mind spirit, the ad adjutant of intuition, the spirit of quick understanding. But the description of these four creatures called beasts has been sadly marred. They are of unparalleled beauty and exquisite form. You're muted, Roger. You're muted, Roger. I'm going to take you on a little side trip here. And don't let me forget to come back and get this last paragraph, but I'm going to go over here to the Bible references, okay? I think I'm going to go to the Bible. There we go. Here we go. Down near the end of this, this is all the references for this entire paper. But down near the end, you're gonna see some references to Revelation. You see those right under I, I, Isaiah. Isaiah actually has a reference to the adjutant mind spirits, right? And it says, and, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord and shall make him quick understanding and fear of the Lord and he shall not, judge after the sight of his eyes neither reprove after the hearing of his ears in other words he'll be above that that's out of isaiah okay the old testament but this is the re the uh, references that are talking about uh, in revelation and here it is revelation 4 4 the 24 central nerves are eight elders now where are these these Jerusalem. are in jerusalem Right, right, okay. And round about the throne were four and 20 seats. Upon the seats I saw four and 20 elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Remember that? All right. And then it says, 410, the four and 20 elders fall down before him and sat on the throne and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns 
before the throne saying, et cetera, et cetera. And then one more, uh, out of the thrones proceed lightnings and thunders of voices where there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God, the seven adjutants, okay? That's all, that one there, the seven adjutants is what? Salvington, right? Okay. And I want to uh, go ahead and read the one about the beast because we're going to talk about this in the next paragraph. And before the throne were the sea of glass like unto a crystal. We know there's a sea of glass on Southington, right? In the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the four beasts was like a lion, a second beast like a calf, the third beast like the face of a man, the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. The four points of the compass, basically, is what they're talking about here, okay? The four beasts had each of them, about them, six wings about them. They were all full of eyes with them, rest not, rest not day or and night, saying, Holy, Holy Lord, Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever, speaking of Jesus, right? All right. I think I can skip, but there's others here. If you want to come back to this, you can read them later. Okay. Let me kill that one and let's go to the next paragraph. All right. Um, Rodney, would you take that next paragraph? The, the four, four points of points. Yeah. The four points of the of the compass are universal and inherent in the life of Nabadon. All living creatures possess bodily units which are sensitive and respond to these directional currents. These cre creature creations are duplicated on down through the universe to the individual planets. And in conjunction with the magnetic forces of the worlds, so activate the host of microscopic bodies in the animal organisms that these direction cells ever point north and south. Thus is the sense of orientation forever fixed in the living beings of the universe. The, this sense is not wholly wanting as a conscious possession by mankind. These bodies were first observed on your ranch about the time of this narration. Okay. That was what, 1934, right? Yeah. Guess what was coming into existence in 1934? X-ray studies, okay? <laughs> They had figured out how to basically, with an x-ray machine, there, there's a, I could explain it technically, but it would make sense to hardly anybody. But basically, what the x-ray machine does is it sends ions through you, and it's picked up on a screen, okay? And when it does this, it takes the magnetic force of your own cells, uh, your bones, your soft tissue, everything, and it radiates these onto a screen. Now, I got one even more interesting. Now, this is in 34, right, 35. Now we have magnetic resonance imaging, right, MRIs. And guess what MRIs do? MRIs is work, works on the same principle, but the difference is this. When they take a MRI, it lines up every single cell in your body magnetically so that all the poles are facing the same direction. Okay, that's how it works. Okay, and that is projected onto a computer screen, um, computer sensor, and that comes out on the computer as an image. Okay, so basically, when they shoot you through an MRI machine and they send the, the magnet, mag, magnetism through your body, it aligns 
all those cells to the same direction. And when it does that, it can pick that up on the screen. Makes sense. Mm. That's Interesting. How magnetic Interesting. imaging will work. Now, what does that tell us? That means that every single cell in the human body is sensitive to what? North, and south, north and east, south. and west. Okay? Magnetism, right? Magnetic fields. So all our cells are sensitive to these four directions. Okay? And that's why this whole talk about the, the, the beast of directions is so important. And this is the case not only in our local universe, but in the entire super universe. Guess what there is in the super universe? four directions. When you look at a map of the super universe and Havona and paradise, you'll notice most of the pictures have a north, south, east, and west. Because when they explain these things to us, they talk about them that the super universes are making the swing north or south or east or west. So these four points of the compass work even in the master and the super universes. Make sense? Yes. So that's what these four beasts are all You have to all know about. that in order to be able to interpret what we just read. That's yeah, exactly honestly. right. It, yeah. Is that what they, they mean then early, I don't know where, but early in the Bible, when they talk about the creation, they talk about the firmaments. Yes, yeah, yeah. It, everything has to do with the magnetic fields of, of yeah. the universe, right? And that's why every single planet, every single local system, like our, our local system of Menmosha, right? That all of our planets are, we all have our own magnetic fields, right? The sun has its own magnetic field. Our planet has its own magnetic field. Our moon yeah. has its own magnetic field. All the rest of the planets, all the way out to Pluto and Venus, and they all have their own magnetic fields. That those magnetic fields in, are encompassed by the magnetic field of what? The sun. And the mm -hmm. sun's is encompassed, encompassed by the magnetic field of our local system. And the local system is encompassed in the magnetic field of the constellation. And all 100 constellations are encompassed in the magnetic field of what? Salvington, Nebadon, right? Yeah. Our local universe. So do you think the direction is important? Absolutely. Yeah. That's sure. why they have these beings, if you want to call them that, on Salvington that keeps all this magnetic direction in check. And that's what uh john was trying to explain in revelation when he said these bees had eyes in the back eyes in the front they had wings six different directions of wings so he was trying to explain that they could see in all directions they could hear in all directions they could feel in all directions because they had this magnetic field right makes sense yeah quite a revelation honey see, see why at one time i wanted to teach the book of revelation but if you don't know this stuff from like this paper how do you explain that to someone right no oh, that, that that is so true you know i um i uh, still go with my husband and we listen to the mass and this morning the reading i said to him now if you don't know the Arantia, you couldn't make sense out of that reading no, no, no. It, that, it many, many, make any sense at all. Many, many, many passages in the Bible are that yeah. way. Many of them, you know. But once you've read it, and Rodney can attest to this, once you've read it and you go back and read it in the Bible, you go, you get the aha moment, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. This is what they mean by that. Yeah. Yeah. I got, I got it, right? But yeah. you can read it over and over and over and over again. If you don't have this background, you go, "What in the heck?" Are they? No. You know, I you know I used to le read the 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 sayings by Jesus. You know, in the in the New Testament, and I come back and I say, "Why did he say that? What in the world is he talking about? You know, why would he say such a thing?" But 
once you've read the book, it all makes perfect sense, mm -hmm. right? It really does. That's why I call it the aha moment. Aha, I got it. Yeah, <laughs> the big picture, right? You know, it's the difference between looking at uh, a little molecule compared to looking at the whole universe, you know? Yeah. You know, that's why they call it enlightenment, right? Enlightens your life. Okay, the ministry of the spirit. I've forgotten who's up. I think you are, dear. I just read. Oh, did you? Okay, well, Jane would be up then next. Okay. Yeah, uh, five, the ministry of the spirit. The divine minister cooperates with the creator's son in the formulation of life and the creation of new orders of beings up to the time of his seventh bestowal and subsequently after his elevation to the full sovereignty of the universe, continues to collaborate with the sun and the sun's bestowal spirit in the further work of world ministry and planetary progression. Okay, so think about this. After Michael returned from the seventh bestowal, right? Everything changed in, changed in the administration of the local universe. But was, were they done creating planets? No. Were mm -hmm. they done creating beings? Because they had beings they had to have on these planets, right? No. So they're still creating beings even today. Everything goes on just like it did before. The difference is all the circuits... All the, everything that they were going to set up to make it work right is already set up for these beings and these planets and these people that's coming on afterwards, right? Think of it that way. So the new planets and the new beings on this planets have a great advantage because all the circuits are already in place and working. Everything is in order because the sovereignty of our local universe is settled forever right? So there is very little chance of any rebellion ever getting out of control again, right? Because we have these spirit forces in, in place, right? That's another reason why Jesus can squelch any rebellion immediately, right? <clears throat> Take care of it. Make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. All right. Let's go on. Um, Dot Deer, would you take the next one, please? Okay. On the inhabited worlds, the spirit begins the work of evolutionary progression, starting with the lifeless material of the realm, first endowing vegetable life, then the animal organisms, then the first orders of human existence. And each succeeding impartation contributes to the further unfolding of the evolutionary potential of planetary life from the initial and primitive stages to the appearance of will creatures. This labor of the spirit is largely affected through the seven adjutants, the spirits of promise, the unifying and coordinating spirit mind of the evolving planets, ever and unitedly leading the races of men towards higher ideas and spiritual ideals. Wow. Okay. So think of it this way. Has anything changed at all since uh, we were created as a planet and since the seventh bestowal? Not really in the way the planets are made and started, are they? They still evolve just like ever, uh, yeah. just like forever. They got a thing. Right. That's right. The difference is this with the seven adjutants. Uh, working with the different stages of creatures coming along in the planet, you know, first the, you start out with the vegetable life, right? The trees, the, everything else that starts on a planet first, then the animal organisms, the amoebas and all the small things going on. Right. And then eventually it crawls out of the water and we end up with the first orders of human existence. Are these sanctioned beings yet? No, because they don't have thought adjusters, right? They will live and die and go through, you know, life and one short life, right? Then this continues to unfold until you have the appearance 
of the very first type of will creature. And that makes the difference. When a, a creature has its own free will and it chooses a higher concept than itself, its first moral decision, what happens? The thought adjusters start to come, right? At that point, the seven adjutants have been working up to that point through the animals, right? They had they were working with all set all five of these other adjutants all the way up through the beginning, right? But when the first human comes along and makes a will decision, guess what happens? Two of the adjutants kick in, worship and wisdom, right? Up to that point. There was no worship and wisdom on the planet because there was no need for it. But once that happens, then men start making will decision. And after that, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of different types of men and races and everything else building up themselves to, towards higher ideas and higher spiritual ideals, right? It's that adjuster again, right? All right. Let's see here. Uh, you just read here? Okay, I'll read the next one then. Mortal man first experiences the ministry of the spirit in conjunction with mind. When the purely animal mind of evolutionary creature develops reception capacity for the adjustment, adjust, adjutants of worship and wisdom. This ministry of the sixth and seventh adjutant indicates mind evolution crossing the threshold of spiritual ministry. And immediately are such minds of worship and wisdom function included in the spiritual circuits of the divine minister. And this is a picture of those adjutants, right? Interesting part about this is this. You see right above the adjutants, what, are, what is that there? Life carriers. Life carriers. You see that? So mm -hmm. the adjutants come to a planet at the same time as the life carriers. Make sense? Why would they come with the life carriers? Because the life carriers brings starts the life implantation so from, from the very beginning when the first type of animal creature crawls out of the water the life the adjutants are there ready to go to work make sense so they have to be there all right and here's another picture of the seven adjutants I'm going to read the bottom of this. It says the seven adjutant mind spirits always accompany the life carriers to a new planet, but they should not be regarded as entities. They are more like circuits. The spirits of the seven universe adjutants do not function as personalities apart from the universe presence of the divine minister. So they can't function outside the, the circuits of the divine minister. Okay. Okay. Uh, Rodney, would you take the next one? Yes. When mind is thus endowed with the ministry of the Holy Spirit, it possesses the capacity for, parenthesis, consciously or unconsciously, choosing the spiritual presence of the universal Father, the thought adjuster. But it is not until the stole son has liberated the spirit of truth for planetary ministry to all mortals that all normal minds are automatically prepared for the reception of the thought adjusters. The spirit of truth works as one with the presence of the spirit of the divine minister. This dual spirit liaison hovers over the worlds, seeking to teach truth and to spiritually enlighten the minds of men, to inspire the souls of the creatures of the ascending 
races interlead the peoples dwelling on the evolutionary planets ever towards their paradise goal of divine destiny. Okay, there's one thing in this paragraph we need to realize that's very, very important, and that is this. The Holy Spirit's presence is on the planet from the beginning of the planet. You got me? Yeah. The Holy Spirit. Yeah. yeah. From the very beginning. Actually, the that's of, also there. It, it says in the Bible, it hovers from it the hovers beginning. The it planet, hovers. From the beginning. Yeah, over, that's yeah. right. That's right. But the spirit of truth, that is not the case. No. Okay. The spirit of truth does not come to all men on the planet until a son of God comes and with a revelation, whether it be a magisterial son, a Trinity teacher son, a creator son in our case, does the spirit of truth be but does it does it get poured out upon all flesh so upon the finish of the ministry of our first magisterial son that comes to the planet when he is done and ready to leave what happens the spirit of truth is poured out on all flesh okay mm -hmm. before that point before the the magisterial son or the son of god comes there, there can be people choose to follow the will of the adjuster. They can, like it says, consciously or unconsciously choose to, to, to follow the spiritual presence of the Father. This can happen before the spirit of truth is poured out, okay? But because the of, of the truth, Holy Spirit. Because of the Holy Spirit, that's exactly right. But the spirit of truth, uh, after the spirit of truth is poured out on the planet, then all normal minds are ready for adjusters. Make sense? Yes. Okay, so the spirit of truth and, uh, and the thought adjusters come first, then the spirit of truth gets poured out on all, all the planet, and then all men are ready for the thought adjusters after that. Makes sense? We're all upgraded. We're all upgraded. That's right. Let's try to get through these last three paragraphs before we quit tonight here. Oh, um, wait a minute. I've got yeah. a comment. Yeah. It, it makes you wonder what it was like, you know, more than 2,000 years ago before the spirit of truth. I mean, we were born into it. So imagine... Yeah was like back then and barbaric with the yeah. evil spirits still here yeah oh running around like crazy right okay. i mean there were still demons out there and stuff you know it was a not a pretty sight by any yeah. stretch of the imagination yeah jane would you take the next paragraph please though the spirit that's where we are right though the yeah wait a minute I, did i skip rod rodney did you just read you skipped rodney yeah I oh, just, okay, uh, right. Rodney Stern. Oh, did, you just read. He just read. Okay, okay. Okay. No, I read. No, no I read. You You're up, on, Rodney. It's your turn. Okay, your turn. Sorry. Um, though the spirit of truth, right? Yeah. Right. Is poured out upon all flesh. The spirit of the Son is almost wholly limited in function and power by man's personal reception of that which constitutes the sum and substance of the mission of the bestowed son. The heavenly spirit is partly independent of human attitude and partially conditioned by the decisions and cooperation of the will of man. Nevertheless, the ministry of the Holy Spirit becomes increasingly effective in the sanctification and spiritualization of the inner life of those mortals who the more fully obey the divine leadings. So what does that mean? That means if you reject Jesus or you reject the, the magisterial sons 
or any of the sons of God that comes to help you, if you reject those beings, then you have cut the effectiveness of the spirit of truth off or away from you. You see what it's saying here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you want, you asked me, I know it's been asked again and again, what about people that don't believe in Jesus and will they sometimes make it to the mansion worlds? If they believe in God, the father and the brotherhood of man, yeah, they'll probably make it to the mansion worlds, but their life in this planet and their preparations for the mansion worlds will be lacking terrain, uh, you know, so much it's unbelievable, right? Because they've rejected the very spirit that was put there for them, right? All right. All right. Now, Jane, would you take the next one? <laughs> okay. As individuals, you do not personally possess a segregated portion or entity of the spirit of the creator, father, son, or the creative mother spirit. These ministries do not contact with nor indwell the thinking centers of the individual's mind as do the mystery monitors. Thought adjusters are definite individualizations of the pre-personal reality of the universal father, actually indwelling the mortal mind as a as a very part of that mind. And they ever work in perfect harmony with the combined spirits of the creator son and the creative spirit. So you see how the, the uh, spirit of truth and the Holy Spirit does not indwell your mind. It's a mm -hmm. superimposition, right? <clears throat> superimposed. All right, dear, would you take the last paragraph there? The presence of the Holy Spirit, of the universe daughter of the infinite spirit, of the spirit of truth, of the universe son, of the eternal son, and the adjuster spirit of the paradise father in or, in or with an evolutionary mortal denotes symmetry of spiritual endowment and ministry and qualifies such a mortal consciously to realize the faith fact of sonship with God. Okay, so this is part, the threefold influence on us that makes us part of sons of God. Make sense? Yes. Okay. It completes the Trinity. It completes our, the Trinity influence. Right? That's right. That's right. So next time we'll take it up with the spirit and man. Man, we just barely made it one minute. <laughs> All right, let's have a little prayer and then we'll uh, we'll quit for tonight. Dear, you want to say a short one for us? Dear, dear Father God, we just are so grateful for this opportunity that you've given to us to come together and to be of, of re receiving the truth through the study of this book, putting the pieces together that we have wondered about for most of our lives. I'm just so grateful. Thank you so much for Roger and his time that he's spent learning and putting the information and the intellectual experiences he's had as a doctor, putting the pieces together and, and providing us with answers we've also seeked so, so very long in our lives, so much. We are so grateful, so very grateful for this book. In your name, Jesus Christ, Michael of Nevedon. We give thanks. Praise you. Amen. 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 Thank and, you. And thank you all at home for uh, coming thank and seeing us and sharing with us. And thank you guys for showing up tonight. We appreciate it. And uh, we will continue on this next week. Let me uh, stop the Facebook uh, first. Go ahead and stop your recording. Okay.